okay, I'm going to do the wise dog on the tucker box. And it actually talks about how Australia has been taken over by foreign ownership seen through the eyes of the dog in the tucker box. The dog sits on the tucker box. He's getting pretty mad. The country's gone to other dogs. It's getting flaming bad. They're selling out Australia. It makes you wonder why. The tucker box is foreign owned, says the dog from Gundagai. They're selling farms and factories. A million out of work. From Sydney town to Adelaide and way out back of Burke. It's time that true blue Aussies, that means you and I, stand up and guard the tucker box, said the dog from Gundagai. In 10 years time, what happens if we don't make a stand? Who will own those jolly jumbucks across our native land? Who will run our mines and factories? Who will pay our kids the doll? Which bank will own your mortgage? Who will own you, heart and soul? Who will pay your flaming wages? Who will make you pay the rent? Who will tell your kids what happened and where their freedom went? Or can that digger spirit, our bit of do or die, take back the flaming tucker box? Ask the dog from Gundagai. Okay, just going to do a little short one now. It's quite a nice little poem called The Farmer's Wife, and it's written by Norma Jeffries. She shades her eyes against the sun and quietly prays for rain. The cattle standing by the trough need water once again. Her hands are rough from feeding stock. Her back is sore from bending. She'll not complain until it rains. These chores are never ending. Her garden now reduced to dust with scarce a blade of grass. With heavy hands she'll stand and watch the rain clouds as they pass. She'll battle on, for well she knows, the rain will surely pour. Once more the farm will turn to green, the way it was before. She'll see the stock once more content and watch the waving wheat. She'll stand upon the lush green grass, a carpet beneath her feet. For her, there's no rush of city streets. She chose this way of life. She loves, her land. She loves this land, she loves her man. She is a farmer's wife. Which I might do one I did the other day. Um, poor old granddad, it's a little bit longer than some of the other short ones I've been doing. Uh, Graham Watt written this poem. Poor old granddad passed away, cut off in his prime. He never had a day off crook, gone before his time. We found him in the dunny, collapsed there on the seat. A startled look upon his face, his trousers round his feet. The doctor said his heart was good, fit as any trout. The constable, he had his say, foul play was not ruled out. Although there theories at the inquest of snake bite without a trace, of redbacks quietly crawling and death from outer space. No one had a clue at all. The judge was in some doubt when Dad was called in to have his say as to how it came about. I reckon I can clear it up, said Dad with trembling breath. You see, it's quite a story, but it might explain his death. There was this here exploration mob, they were looking at our soil, and they reckoned that our farm was just the place to look for oil. So they came and put a bore down, said they'd do some trials. They dug a hole as deep as hell, they said about three miles. Well, they never found a trace of oil, and off they went post haste. But I couldn't see a hole like that go to flame and waste, so I moved the dunny over it. A real smart move, I thought. I'd never have to dig again, I'd never be caught short. Now the day I moved the dunny, it looked a proper sight, but I didn't dream poor Grandad was going to pass away that night. Now I reckon what has happened, poor Grandad didn't know that the dunny was relocated that night when he had to go. And I suppose you're all wondering how poor Grandad did his dash. Well, he always used to hold his breath until he heard the splash. <laughs>